close to 50% of the water utilized in an um, urban area is devoted for landscape irrigation. The fact that potable water uh, treated by the cities is the one that typically is used to irrigate uh, landscape plantings. It's an uh, issue of concern, particularly now that we're facing uh, uh, water restrictions, uh, a lot of water competition and the drought that is being go ongoing in the state. In this particular study, very interested in uh, what the feasibility uh, and the effects of utilizing uh, a potential, potentially available water source at every single household in the state of Texas and you know in the nation, and that is gray water. Gray water, by definition, is wastewater from a household that comes basically from the washing machines, showers, uh, bathtubs. Uh, basically those three uh, main components. And this could constitute, great water could constitute up to 50% of all the wastewater produced daily in a household. It is estimated that an average family of four could produce upwards of 90 to 100 gallons of great water per day. So if we take that into account and, you know, uh, compound it over the course of a week, we can have a substantial volume of water that could meet a good part, perhaps, entirely the uh, irrigation needs of a planting. Now, interest is not only on what's the effect of gray water on the aesthetic performance, the growth and the development of the different plant materials, but we are very um, interested in what's the effect, the long-term effect of irrigating plants with uh, soapy water, gray water being made up primarily of uh, detergents and soaps uh, uh, and products of that nature, and what's the effect on the uh, biology and the, and the physic, uh, physical and chemical characteristics of the soil. So we are very interested o over the course of a, a few years of utilizing gray water for landscape irrigation, what's going to be the effect on, on those organisms and whether or not they will have some implications in that small system or ecosystem. So here we have a, a replicated study. It's a little bit uh, over half an acre. We have replicated roads of uh, 13 different species of plants and we are irrigating them with uh, three different irrigation waters. One that is a controlled uh, 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 irrigation treatment that is made up basically of just uh, well water, good, good quality water. And then we have two treatment with gray water. One that it has just a conventional uh, a washing machine uh, detergents and softeners. And we have a second uh, gray water treatment that contains also a bleaching agent. So we are having those three water treatments and then we had two different irrigation regimes, one where the, water, the plants are well water and another one where they're subjected to, uh, to uh, uh, a reduction on the uh, amount of water that they're applied. We call that deficit irrigation. And here we have a, a small water station in, right in the middle of the plot where we're monitoring all the environmental variables uh, surrounding this uh, research plot. Uh, and that includes uh, air uh, wind speed, and direction, uh, temperature, relative humidity, uh, precipitation, you know, rainfall, uh, solar radiation, as well as we have some sensors buried into the soil and, and they're feeding information into the data logger with uh, uh, information on soil temperature and soil moisture content. Also, we're going to be installing uh, very soon sensors in, in some of the treatments in these beds that will be monitoring uh, soil moisture uh, uh, percentage, uh, uh, which will be able to relate to the amount of water that is being applied to each treatment, as well as the uh, uh, pH and the electrical conductivity or the total amount of salts that are being uh, present and, and, and how they behave over time in function of the treatments that we're applying.